so we have stopped here in the last day we have uh, discussed the pi model of uh, a bipolar junction transistor involving uh, only three elements so uh, we have uh, this uh, r in this resistance which is connected between the base and emitter terminal another uh, voltage dependent uh, current source gm uh, v in which is connected between the uh, collector and the emitter and this output resistance r not which is connected between the collector and emitter right and what is that v in is basically the voltage uh, developed across this resistance r in and lastly, we have also uh, visualized that uh, ultimately this particular model looks like a pi, a inverted pi like this. So that's why it is called a pi model. So in pi model, you have uh, three defined elements, R, E, G, M, R naught. So sometimes since it is, uh, it is there in the pi model, so uh, sometimes it is also called R pi, this resistance R in. And uh, the uh, voltage uh, developed across this R in or R pi is called the V in or V pi, right? And the voltage dependent current source GMP in or GMP pi. And in this resistance uh, that was given by VA, the early voltage divided by the ICQ. We have developed last week an expression for that. And for some typical values for this uh, IBQ and all, uh, say for example, your uh, this 25 millivolt at room temperature. And suppose early voltage is 400 volt and beta is equal to 100 and say your IBQ value, the uh, quiescent base can is 5 microampere. Then uh, if you calculate uh, these different values like R pi, GM and uh, this R naught, it is coming like uh, 5 kilo ohms. Typically uh, the R naught value, R pi value is something like that, a few uh, kilo ohms. And the GM uh, which is given by IBQ because already the value of beta is given so, and IBQ is given 5 microamperes. So ICQ is uh, 500 microamperes or 0.5 milliampere and then uh, your GM is coming as uh, 20 milli ohms and R is very large. So the basic idea of these uh, different values is that you have to understand or appreciate what, what could be the, the possible uh, range for this R pi uh, GM and so that in some uh, particular case uh, you can uh, right because uh, in that case as we have observed, R0 is equal to 800 kilo ohms. Sometimes, now if you have some RC, some collector resistance connected between the collector and AC ground, in that case, if it is in the range of few kilo ohms, it is coming in parallel with R0. So, for the simplicity of your calculation, sometimes you can ignore this uh, R0, right, because it is large with respect to this RC and all. So, uh, this particular slide gives you some uh, feeling about what should be the possible range of those values, R pi, GM, and this R0. Now, pi model is one kind of model uh, by means of which you can visualize the transistor operation, but it is not only the single model. There are so many models apart from this pi model. So, uh, today uh, let's move to this model. So, once again, we are now using this uh, transistor, a uh, bipolar junction transistor is a two port network. As you understand, that uh, for, for a BJT, you have three different terminals you have base, you have emitter, you have collector. Right? And since we are visualizing this uh, BJT as a two port network, so obviously you have one port at the input side, another port at the output side, and you have two terminals. Terminal, I mean, uh, this is one, one, one particular, so if I consider this one, so for this port one, you have uh, this particular uh, node and this particular node. This is considered to be the reference node. And similarly for the uh, output port, you have this particular node and this node. So this is a reference node, which is, uh, which is common both for the input port as well as for the output port, right? So, uh, what we can do, we can uh, consider one of the terminals, say for example, the emitter terminal is considered to be the, uh, the reference terminal. So, with respect to emitter, we are measuring everything. That means, uh, your uh, input port or the port 1 is between the base and emitter, and the output is between the collector and the emitter. Now, here, there are some uh, uh, terminology, some notations. Uh, I don't know whether you have studied two port network in a circuit or not, as of now. You have not studied yet, so you will study this one. So that is a typical uh, architecture for a two-port network. Typically, uh, this particular voltage this is considered to be the positive with respect to the reference one, and this is this terminal is considered to be more positive with respect to the reference one. So this is a V1, the voltage at the no, uh, port one, and V2, the voltage at the port two, and the current which is entering through port one is I1, and that is the positive direction of the current when I1 is entering. That is the positive direction, and similarly for port two, this is the positive direction I2. So you have different uh, variables here, V1. I1, V2, and I2. So V1 is your uh, input uh, port 1 voltage, 
I1 is the port 1 current, uh, V2 is the voltage at the port 2 and I2 is the uh, current, uh, the positive current at port 2. So now what we can, uh, what we can visualize, so whenever we, we will uh, visualize uh, this particular two port network uh, as, uh, as a combination of this, uh, this V and I, then one of the voltage is considered uh, independent one and one of the current is considered to be an independent one. So for this particular model, we are considering that uh, I1, I1 and V2, I1 and V2, these are considered to be the independent parameters, I1 and V2. And accordingly, we represent the V1 and I2, right? So I1 and V2 here, so these are the variables. So I1 and V2, they are independent. independent variables, currents and voltages and V1 and I2, they are the corresponding dependent variables. So therefore, what I can write V1 written as V1 is equal to some constant to I1 plus some constant to V2. V1 is equal to some H11 I1 and H12, I am coming to that Y by H1 and Y H1. So V1 is some constant multiplied with I1 because this I1 and V2 they are considered to be the independent variables, right? And V1 and I2 they are corresponding dependent variables which, which will depend on the values of this I1 and V2. So I can write V1 as uh, uh, some constant times I1 plus some constant times V2. Similarly, I2 can be represented as constant times I1 plus some constant times V2. So these constants are different. So uh, if I uh, want to represent this V1 and I2 uh, in, in, a, in a matrix form, in a vector form, uh, what I can write, this V1, V1, and you have I2 over there, so it's a vector, V1, I2 is a vector, column vector, two row, and one column. Right, so 2 cross 1. So that can be written as product of product of two different product of two different matrix, one matrix and one vector. 2 cross 2 and multiplied with 2 cross 1, right? So what is that 2 cross 1 over there? I1 and V2. So V1 and I2, they are the independent, they are the dependent variables and I1, V2, this particular vector will give you the notion of the uh, variables. V1, I2, dependent variable, I1, V2, independent variable. So therefore, right over there, so you have a 2 cross 2 a matrix over there, V1, this, this, so you have some variables over there, some variables over there. So V1 is equal to this, multiplied with this, plus this, multiplied with this, right? So what I can write, this is nothing but your H11, I am coming to the value why H, why not some other variable, why not some other, other name? H11, H12, first row, first column, first row, then second row, first column, second row, second column. Now you check, V1, is equal to H11 I1 plus H12 V2. Similarly, I2 is equal to H21 I1 plus H22 V2. Okay. So, this one we can represent this V1 I2, this particular uh, vector, product of a matrix, uh, H, H matrix, I can call it H11 H12 H21 H2, two cross two matrix multiplied with I1 V2, another vector. So, this is the independent uh, variable vector, this I1 V2 and the dependent variable vector v1 i2. So, if I want to represent in the algebraic something like that, v1 is equal to h1 on i1 plus h1 to v2 and i2 is equal to h2 on i1 plus h2 to v2. Then the question is that how can I find out those values, these, uh, these parameters h1, h1, to h2, h2, and h2. Now, if we take a look at uh, the, now if you, if you take a look at the expression, how can we get, get of h1 on so V1 is equal to H1 on I1 plus H1 to V2. So in order to find out H1, 
H11. What you need to do, this is nothing but the ratio of V1 and I1 when V2 is equal to 0. Right? Because two variables, I1 and V2, these are the two independent variables. So, you can use them, I1 and V2, but not with V1 and I2, they are dependent variables. So, what is your H11? H11 is nothing but the ratio of V1 and I1, V1 upon I1 with V2 is equal to 0. Here, V1 upon I1 with V2 is equal to 0. How to find out H21? Similarly, H21 is the ratio between I2 and I1 to 0. Right? So, V1 is equal, H11 is equal to V1 by 1 with V2 is equal to 0 and H21 is equal to I2 by I1 with V2 is equal to 0. So, whenever you make this particular arrangement, that means V2 is equal to 0. What does it mean? That means you are making the output port short circuit. What is V2? V2 is the output voltage at port 2. So, if you just two nodes, I mean, uh, in the port 2, we have two nodes, the upper node and the lower node, the lower node is the front node. Now, if you uh, simply uh, make the short circuit connection over there, and then if you just find, try to find out this V1 upon I1, with this, with this particular condition that V2 is equal to 0, this gives rise to H11. Okay? And similarly, uh, yeah. Under this condition, if you just measure the ratio of these two currents, I2 upon I1 with V2 is equal to 0, that will give you the value of H21. Okay. Now, coming back to the other two parameters, H12 and H22, how, how to get H1? You just uh, take a look over there. What you get? H, H1. What is that? H12 is nothing but V1 upon V2, which V1 is equal to 0, and uh, H22 is nothing but I2 upon V2, which I1 is equal to 0. That means for, for this calculation, H1 and H21, you are making a particular arrangement that is V2 is equal to 0, you are making the uh, output port uh, shorted. And for this one, uh, H, for the calculation of H, H2, what you are doing, you are making the input port open. I1 is equal to 0, that means you are making it open, I1 is equal to 0. And then if you measure this V1 upon V2, with 0, you will be getting H12. And if you uh, find out this I2 upon V2 with I1 is equal to 0, you will be getting H2. Right? The next question is that why these are called the the H parameter or this A, why, the, why the name H? Why the variable H? Why not the other variable? Maybe A, B, C, D, anything. But why not uh, why, why H only here? Any guess? What does A stand for? Hybrid. Yeah, yeah hybrid. True, but why it is hybrid? Yeah, it's true, it's a hybrid mode. Right. Yeah, it's high, A stands for hybrid, but why is it hybrid? Why is it hybrid? Now, if you if you if you just uh, take variables uh, or rather the, those parameters, v1 upon i1, what is that? v1 by i1, v by i, resistance, right? I2 upon I1, what is it? Ratio. Ratio of two currents. You can call it current gain. I1 is input current, I2 is output current, so it's basically current gain. Right? What about H12? V1 upon V2. It is not exactly the voltage gain, rather, you can call it reverse. V1 upon V2. It is not V2 upon V1, rather, V1 upon V2. So, reverse voltage gain. Right? What is this H, H22? I2 upon V2. Conductance. So you have the mixture of different parameters. One is a resistance, another is a conductance, another is a forward current gain, another is reverse voltage gain. So different as and obviously the as far as the units are concerned, this for H11 the unit is ohms or kilo ohms, maybe in the in the in order of ohms. For H22 it is mo, one upon ohm. Right? And for H12 and H21, they are images. Hmm. In that, it is not called H model. Uh, there is another model which is known as a Z parameter model. In case of Z parameter, uh, hopefully you will study the Z parameter model in, in your secondary course. Uh, in case of Z parameter models, all these variables, they are, I mean, this. Uh, 
constants. So all of them are in, in terms of z, or in terms of the impedance, or in terms of resistance. Right. So in that case, your independent variables will be only the current. Right. So all the part of these course, but still, I'd like to mention over there. So for z parameter model, you have something like that. Some v1, the voltage at the port one can be represented as z11 i1 plus z12 i2 and v2 is represented by z21 i1 plus z22 i2. In that case i1 and i2 they are considered to be the independent uh, parameters and uh, v1 and v2 they are considered to be the dependent parameters. Right and similarly you have some other parameters like emission parameters but these are not uh, the part of this course so I am just uh, ignoring all these things anyway. So is it okay? Why is it called these H models are hybrid uh, parameters? Right. So had this been the case then obviously we have already studied the pi model. This is another model. H model or hybrid, hybrid model. And we have to the use of uh, this uh, different types of models. Ultimately we would, we would like to find, uh, find out the, the behavior of this particular transistor for some given example. We have provided some stimulus, we have tried to understand the behavior of this particular device and based on that we are using some fundamental circuit elements like resistance or capacitance or current source or voltage source or inductance and using those parameters resistor, inductor, capacitor, voltage source, current source we would like to replicate the behavior of that particular device. Okay. It seems that these models are not independent, rather there is a relation, close relation between those different models. So now, before going into the relation or establishing the relation, let's try to identify how does it look like basically. Now here we have uh, visualized, in this particular slide we have visualized the transistor two port network. We have never uh, identified what is your port one, what is your port two, and what are those terminals. Already, I have told you that one terminal should be the common terminal because you have, I mean, one node should be the common over there because this is a reference. This is a reference line, right? So for transistor, you have three uh, such. Uh, you have emitter, base, and collector, three such terminals, and uh, if you would like to represent this uh, this particular transistor under a two then obviously one terminal should be the common terminal, one terminal. So uh, in the next slide what we have done, we have met this emitter terminal as a common terminal which is a very uh, and very uh, generic uh, observation. So what you find between uh, base to emitter, this is the voltage VBE which is nothing but your good one, uh, this V1 voltage right and uh, between collector to emitter you have the another voltage that is VCE. So this is not you can remember this is a basically the V1 this voltage V1. This is the V1 voltage and this is the V2 voltage. Okay and this current is basically the I1 and this current is I2. Now whenever I call it I1, V1, V2, I2, so that's a generic kind of representation and whenever I say like I, B, I, C, V, B, V, C, that means this is very much uh, related to the transistor operation. What I can write, already have seen that V1 is equal to some H11, I1, what was the expression, let me once again write it down, what was the expression, V1 is equal to H11, I1 plus H12 V2 and I is equal to H21 I1 plus H22 V2. That is a very generic expression for any two port network. Now, this time we would like to visualize the transistor as a part of the two port network. And accordingly, I have to identify which is my port 1, which is my port 2, what is the node 1 of the port 2, what is the node 2 of the port 2. What is the node 1 of the port 1? What is the node 2 of the port 1? Okay, so here the is common that is emitter terminal both for the input port as well as for the output port, node 2. 
and node 1 for the input port is your base terminal and node 2 for the input port is the emitter terminal node 1 for the output port and node 2 of your output port is the emitter terminal okay and uh, you have identified that your v1 voltage is nothing but the vbe voltage and, uh, uh, your v2 voltage is nothing but the vce voltage right so v v1 instead of writing v1 what i can write this is nothing but vbe Gb is equal to some constant multiplied with I1, that kind is Ib, plus some constant multiplied with the V2. So here V2 is the Vc. Then now, here instead of writing H11, what I am writing is Hie. Why is it so? What does it mean? H, instead of writing H11, I am writing Hie. What is Hie? Hi stands for, I stands for, I stands for, it's, it's nothing but H parameter. It's an H parameter, so therefore I have to write like H. So instead of writing 1, 1, because whenever I write 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, that's much more generic. Now, let it be much more specific to your transistor operation. Right. So whenever I'm writing H11, one, one, that's a very generic, generic kind of approach. And we have already identified this H11, one, one, this is nothing but an impedance. Right. Impedance, and here your emitter terminal is a common terminal. Right? Emitter is common both for input as well as for the output, both for port 1 as well as for the port 2. So that's why this H11 is represented by HIE. E stands for emitter common. HII stands for impedance. Similarly, for this one, what is that? H12, that's, that's voltage gain. V1 upon V2 with I1 is equal to 0. Reverse voltage gain. That's why HRE. HRE, okay, reverse HRE. Similarly, H21 can be represented as H. H stands for forward current gain. F stands for forward. HFE and HOE that is the output admittance or conductance you can call it. Impedance, so here O stands for conductance or admittance. So HOE. Okay. H is a forward current gain. Forward current gain. Okay. So therefore, I can write VB that voltage is nothing but H I E I B plus H R E V C. Okay. Now, if that volt that representation is something like that VB is equal to H I E I B plus H R E V C, then how can I represent it from the component form? I can I represent this? This is the voltage VB. And the current which is which is entering this uh, this particular port is IB. That kind is IB. So therefore, this voltage is equal to so this kind is that is entering is IB. So you must be having some resistance, and this resistance is nothing but because VB one part of VB is HIE IB, and this IB is entering through this. So you have this resistance HI over there. So HI IB is some some voltage HRE VC HRE VC. So, represented by means of another voltage dependent voltage source, HREVC. So, that voltage is a function of your output voltage over there, HREVC. Okay, so VB is nothing but HIIV plus HREVC. What about your, so here uh, in the port 1, we have applied some KPL. Right? In the second equation, your I2 is equal to H21 I1 plus H22 V2. So, what is I2? I2 is nothing but IC, the collector current. So, collector current is equal to HFEIV. HFE IV, so you will be having, so now here in the port 2, we apply some KCL, current law. So this kind of two components, one is that, that current, that is HFE IV, a voltage dependent, uh, so here it is a current dependent current source, not a voltage dependent, but rather uh, uh, gradually we will uh, show you that uh, this uh, voltage, this dependent current source can be present as a voltage dependent current source, right? Because for time only I have seen it's a voltage dependent current source, right? So it's a volt, it's a current dependent current source HFE IB. If this kind is IB, then this kind is HFE IB. And then what you have, you have OE VC. Now what is that? How can I represent this HOE VC? Can I represent this by means of a, a voltage dependent voltage source or no? Is it required? Voltage dependent voltage source? No, no, no. Can I represent in terms of voltage dependent voltage source or voltage dependent current source? Like what you have done last time? 
HRDPC for HRDPC, what I have, what I have used? I have used a voltage dependent voltage source. So can I use a voltage dependent current source here? Yes or no? Remember, between these two points, suppose I have connected, say for example, I have connected some, uh, say I have connected some voltage dependent current source. That is equal to say HOE VC. Let me do that. Now this voltage dependent current source is connected between two terminals whose voltage is basically this VC. Right. That means suppose I have two terminals A and B. This is a current source whose value is given by K V A B. K times V A B. This current I A B is equal to K times V A B. So instead of representing by means of a voltage dependent current source, what I can do, this is nothing but so what is the what is the magnitude of this current? K times V A B? Right? That means this is equivalent to this is equivalent to a resistance. Whose value is how much? 1 by k. Right. Because the magnitude of this particular is proportional to the voltage between these two terminals. Similarly, here also HOEVC. So you have HOEVC terms over there, and this current source is connected between the two terminals whose voltage difference is equal to VC. So it's nothing but a simple resistance. That is 1 upon HOE. And 1 upon HOE is your resistance. HOE is conductance, but 1 upon HOE is a resistance. Right? Is it okay? Let's try to visualize. Now, this is your H parameter model. Now, let's uh, find out the relation between this model and the pi model that we have already studied. What was that? For pi model, what was the structure? It's a simpler model. Looks something like that. Suppose this is your base terminal, this is the emitter terminal, this is the collector terminal. You have R pi there, GM V pi there, and R naught there. So, is there any relation between this model and that model? I mean, the parent for pi models, how many parameters were there? Three parameters one is R pi, second one was GM, and the third parameter was R naught. And here you have four parameters HIE, HRD, HFE, HOE. Now, what is the relation? Because ultimately, the basic device is a transistor. Now, you are representing this transistor either under the box of a pi model or under the box of a H parameter. You are representing the same thing, but you are visualizing the perspective. You are observing the same element, you are observing the same device, the same bipolar junction transistor using different angle, from different angles. You are just observing or you are trying to represent the same device from different parts. So obviously, there will be some relation, some interconnection between the different elements. Right? So what is the relation there? A hybrid model or H model? So the HRD should be zero, or if, if it is not zero, it is very small, right? Because you don't have you Sorry. you don't have any voltage dependent voltage source there. So therefore, this HRD is either zero, or you can call it very small, that like, that which can be neglected, negligibly small, right? And your HIE is nothing but your R pi. Because ultimately inside this black box, you have a transistor. Inside this black box, you have a transistor. So there should be some correlation between the elements present over here and the elements present over here. So your HIE is nothing but R pi. Right? Then your HFEIB 
HFEIP is equal to it's a so whenever I am representing this current as HFEIP, that means a current dependent current source. HFEIP is a current source is given by some constant multiplied with the current. So current dependent current source, and here we have represented by means of a voltage dependent GM V pi. So ultimately these two are related. GM V pi and HFEIP they are related. GMV pi and HFI and then your R naught is nothing but 1 upon HM. So these are the relations between these two different models, H and the pi model. R pi is equal to, pi is equal to HFIB, HRE is equal to 0 or very small you can call it almost 0, 0 and R naught is equal to 1 upon HOE. So henceforth well, so uh, we have to uh, refer to this uh, small signal model many a times for doing the calculations for the calculating the, the gain of the amplifier. In that case, we will uh, use this, uh, this these parameters side by side. Sometimes I will use I will refer to each parameter model. Sometimes I can also refer to the pi model. Same thing. I can write like R pi. I can also write like H i. They give you the same feeling. I can write like GMV pi, I can also write like HFEIP because we understand that GMV pi and HFEIP they are the same. So, mix and match mode, I can use uh, these uh, different parameters. Okay. And then, uh, so whenever I consider uh, that particular model uh, which uh, involves only three R pi, GMV pi, and R naught, so that's a simplistic model. And here this is an expanded uh, uh, pi model. So in case of pi, mod, uh, pi model, we have used another, uh, we have taken into account another two more parameters. What are those two? Already have seen that these, two, these three parameters are already there. R pi was there. GM V pi was there. What is the, what was that V pi? V pi was this resistance argument. And R naught was there. So R naught. GM V pi and R pi. So these three elements are already there. In case of a simplistic pi model, in case of expanded pi model, we are using another different components. Uh, basically, we have used two different resistance. One is the base spreading resistance RB or RBB, which is connected between the external base terminal and the idealized internal terminal. That is the resistance RB. Typically, that, that value is very small in the range of few uh, tens of ohms. And another resistance which serves as a feedback connection between the collector terminal and the base terminal between the output and the input in the form of RB whose value is typically very large in the range of few mega ohms. So we have included these two parameters. One is your RB, a base spreading resistance which is connected between the external uh, external term, external base terminal and the idealized internal terminal. And the second resistance RB which is uh, connected between the, the output port and output. that means it serves as a feedback. This RB serves as a feedback between the output port and the input port. Typically that value is very small. RB is in the range of few mega ohms and RB is very small. Now with this expanded model, now, so already have seen that relation, we have already established that relation, uh, R pi equal to H, R pi is equal to H, F, I, B, H, R, D is equal to 0 and R O is equal to 1 upon H, O, E. With the simple pi model. Now with this expanded pi model, now once again, because in case of your uh, simple pi model, we have just the pi model, side by side you have also visualized the H model and the comparison, what is what, right. But here, since the model is somewhat different, in that case you have to do this calculation to find out the relation between this H parameter model and the pi model, right. Okay, so this is your uh, expanded model, this one, this is your expanded model. And then we would like to find out the relation between this model and the H parameter model. Now you know how to calculate those H parameter model. First one is what? First one is your H I E. How to find out H I E? What was the condition? If you can remember it properly, what was it? It's nothing but V1 upon V1 upon I1, with V2 is equal to 0. That means it is nothing but V B E upon I B with V C is equal to 0. Right? And similarly, what is your HFE, 
What is your HFE? HFE is equal to IC upon IP, VC is equal to 0. So if I make this correct, uh, this uh, uh, arrangement, that means VC is equal to 0, out, if, I, if I make the output port shorted, then I can uh, find out these two parameters, HIE and HFE. Right? So already this is your uh, H parameter, I mean the expanded pi model, RB, you have R pi, you have R mu, GMB pi, you have R mod. Right? And then by making VC, Connecting these two nodes of the output port shorted, that means this is equal to 0. Now I can find out what is my uh, HIE and what is my HIE. So, what is HI? HI is nothing but VBE upon IB. So, I have to apply some voltage between the base and emitter terminal. Suppose this voltage is VBE, some test voltage. Suppose the current being drawn is IB, and then if you take the ratio between this VBE and IB, then you will be getting what is known as HIE. So, what is that? What is that? What should be your uh, VBE upon IB with this, con with this uh, condition that means VC is equal to 0? Yes, HI is resistance. Yes, uh, yes. This port, this is shorted, no? Corrected term, this is shorted for the calculation of HIE. This is shorted. And you apply some voltage over there, VBE, that voltage is the voltage of the port 1, and the current is I, uh, I, and the ratio of these two will give you the value of the input resistance. What is that? No? Now see here, this is shorted, no? So here, so whenever this IP reaches over at this particular point, so there are two different paths. One is through this. Another is through this. That means R pi plus zero. So R not the effect of R not will not be there because this is shorted, no? So one resistance is there R pi. Another resistance is R mu. These two are in parallel, right? And is in series with R mu. So what is the effective resistance? R mu plus R mu plus R pi parallel R mu. Okay, so typically R B is very large and R B is very small. Typically, R B is very small, as I told you, few tens of ohms, and R B is very, very large in the range of few mega ohms. So therefore, this H I value typically this is close to this is approximately equal to your R pi. Okay, because R B is very small and R B is very large, so this is almost equal to R pi. Now, whenever you incorporate RB and RMU, then it is much more, so it will give you some much more accurate result. So for approximate calculation, that is close to R5. But, uh, and typically whenever we do the calculations, we ne neglect RMU and RB. Right. Typically, we are happy with R5. Okay. And then what I would do, what was that? HFP is given by IC upon IP. IC upon IP. Right. IC upon IB with VC is equal to 0. So, what is the relationship between HFE and the pi parameter, I mean the pi models parameters? Typically, RB is very large. Typical RB is very large. You can expect that almost the entire current will flow through this R pi, right? So therefore, the voltage difference between I mean this V pi is nothing but IB times R pi. IB times R pi. That voltage, since RB is very large, since RB is very large, so the entire current will flow through this R pi. So your V pi is nothing but I B times R pi, right? And then what about your HFE? HFE is nothing but I C upon I B. So what is that I C? I C is nothing but G M V pi. So G M V pi by I B. So V pi is given by I B times R pi. Then it is nothing but G M times 
R point. HF is equal to GM times R point. Right? HF is equal to GM times R point. So that's the relation between the parameters of the pi model with the parameters in the H model. So GM and R point, these are the pi, pi model parameter. And what about HAP? That's a H parameter model. Previously, you have already encountered the GM and R point, no? Previously? Previously, you have encountered. What was GM? And what do you want the expression for GM? Transconductance. What was the formula to calculate GM? We have started our today's discussion with that. That was given by ICQ upon PT. Right? What was R pi? PT upon IBQ. So therefore, if I apply them, GM and R pi, what is that? ICQ upon IBQ. That is your beta DC. Beta DC, right? And what is the what is the GM R pi? That is equal to H F E. So now your H F E. So hopefully you can remember whenever we have discussed that uh, right. Whenever we have discussed this uh, BJT biasing, that time uh, there was one parameter called H F E. You are totally confused. What is that H F E called? So that H F E is equal to your beta. Current gain. Basically, what is your HAP? It's a forward current gain. I C upon I B. Forward current gain. That is your good old beta. Okay. So with this arrangement, this is equal to you have calculated the first two parameters, that is H I and the H F. Then we are going to calculate the other two parameters, that is H R E and H O E. What is that? So to find out this relation H I and H O E, you need to make a defined arrangement. Management, you have to make previously you have made the output node output port shorted. This time you have to make the input port open. Right? That means there should not be any connection at the input side. Input port should be open. That means uh, here this connection. There is no connection. This is open. So this current should be zero. I B is equal to zero. And then we have applied some voltage at the PC, collected to meter some voltage and some current IC and then to find out the uh, VBE upon VC with IC V upon VC with IB is equal to zero. That will give you the value of HRE. Isn't it? If you can remember what is the expression. V1 is equal to H or I should write in terms of uh, VBE is equal to H I E times I B plus H R E times V C. So what is this H V B upon V C with I B is equal to zero? V B upon V C with H R with I B is equal to zero. So we have met I B is equal to zero. Then relation between V B upon V C. So what is V B then? That voltage. What is this open circuit voltage? What is Voltage is same as this voltage because there is no current. So this voltage equal to this voltage. So Vb is equal to V pi. And we have applied some voltage over there, VCE. There is no current through this path. So this voltage is VCE, voltage across these two terminals. What is the total resistance the voltage? R pi plus R mu. And that voltage gets dropped across R pi. Here, VB. So voltage division, simple law, simple law. So R pi upon R pi times R mu times V C. R pi upon R pi plus R mu T. So what is your H R E then? What is H R E? This H R E is V B VB upon V C by this voltage with I B is equal to zero. Okay, that means R pi upon R pi plus R mu. 
Typically, that is close to R pi by R1, and typically that is very small. As I have told you, R pi is in the range of Q kilo ohms, and R is in the range of Q mega ohms. So the ratio R pi and R is very small in the range of a few uh, milli, 10 to the power minus 3 in that particular order. So that's a reverse voltage gain, HRE, reverse voltage gain, that is very small. Okay. And then uh, you are left with the third, uh, fourth one, the calculation. Uh, that's your, yeah. So, or rather, I should write IC is equal to HFE times IB plus HOE times VC. Okay, so what is your uh, how to calculate H of OE that is nothing but IC upon VC with IB is equal to 0. Right, what is that IC upon VC with uh, IB is equal to 0? Once again, you have to apply some KCL at the output node. Right, you have basically three components of current one is your good old GMP pi. If I apply KCL over there, if I apply KCL over there, you have three, comp three uh, components of the current. One, one is that current, GMP pi. Another is the current through this. Another is the current through this. Right. What is the current through R naught? Voltage is VC. What is the current through R naught? VC upon R naught. Right. And what is the current through the other path? What is the resistance over here? R pi plus R mu. So what is the voltage VC? So VC upon R5 plus R mu plus VC plus GMP pi. Combination of these three will give you simple IC. Okay? Is clear or not? And then uh, you can represent V pi in terms of VC. Already we have made, made this calculation. V pi is equal to this into VC. So you can represent V pi by R pi by R pi plus R mu times VC. And then if you take the ratio IC upon VC, it is coming out to be GM into R pi by R pi plus R mu plus 1 by R naught plus 1 by plus R mu. And already you have identified that your GM R pi is nothing but your beta. So beta by and R pi plus R mu there also. So you can combine them together. So 1 plus beta upon R pi plus R mu plus 1 upon R naught. Typically, this R5 plus R mu, R mu is very large in the range of few mega ohms. So that can be approximated to zero, this one. So then, for approximate calculation, your HOE is becoming 1 upon R0. That we have already uh, established last time. HOE is equal to 1 upon R0. Otherwise, if you are very much accurate in the calculation, then your HOE is equal to 1 plus beta divided by R5 plus R0. So in your exam, if you are asked to find out the and the exact relation between the H parameter model and the pi model, the parameter is related to pi model, then you have to do this calculation. For, yeah, for approximate calculation, we know that okay, H i is equal to R pi, H o e is equal to uh, 1 upon R naught, G m p pi is equal to H p i. You know, but if you are interested in H i is equal to 0, but if you are interested in calculating the exact value for this or exact relation between the H parameter model and the pi model parameters, then you have to do this calculation. Typically, we will refer the simplistic uh, pi model for our subsequent calculations. Pi model, almost half a There are so many models. There are another model that is known as the RE model. There are so many models. Yeah, pi model is sufficient, but uh, apart from pi model, and introduced to make sense that this is not the only model, only one model. There is another model, and there are other models as well. There are so many models. There are so many models. H model, then you have RE model, it is called T model. Right, RE model is also known as a T model. Apart from pi model, you have T model. And this model, H model. There are so many models to emphasize that the transistor cannot be modeled by, by means of only single model. They can be modeled by different types of models. Either pi model or H parameter model or your T model or R E model. And these models they are interrelated, their parameters are interrelated. To emphasize on that particular issue, 
we have introduced here two different points. But whenever we do the calculation, the analysis, so typically we will uh, use uh, the phi parameter models, the phi models. Simplistic phi model, not the uh, specific one. Okay. Now, with this understanding of the small signal model of the parent of the bipolar junction transistor, and we have already uh, the biasing technique of uh, the transistor amplifier, then now we are in a right position to find out the gain of the uh, BJT based amplifier. Already you have encountered this kind of uh, circuit previously, hopefully, yes. What kind of bias? Fixed, fixed bias. bias. Fixed, fixed bias. bias. Fixed bias or base bias? bias? Simplistic bias. So we will encounter all these three, three or four different types of bias in today. That we already studied. Fixed bias, not the character to base bias, the fixed bias, and then the okay. emitter bias, and then your uh, voltage division by voltage divided bias. So all these three different types of biasing techniques we will consider and accordingly we will measure the corresponding voltage gain. Right. Now this time Apart from the DC voltage, you also have another small signal. And we are interested in finding out the ratio of the output to the input. Right. So what is the voltage that we are trying to magnify? The voltage here is your Vs, that voltage. Right. And typically this voltage is also accompanied with some source resistance, a signal source Vs. Suppose I am having uh, voltage something like that. Suppose I am having say 10 millivolt peak to peak. This is your input voltage. Okay. With some resistance, sometimes this is also accompanied with some resistance, some small, suppose a 10 ohms resistance in series with that. You have some 10 ohms resistance, 10 ohms resistance. Signal source, for example. Suppose you have some microphone, you have some microphone over there which generates some audio signal, like a pure sinusoidal, might, might be something like that. Suppose your, micro, your microphone generates some audio signal, something like this. Hopefully you have observed this pattern, no? You have observed this pattern of your voice signal, right? And you would like to magnify that voice signal. So typically, the microphone is having some internal resistance, suppose say 50 ohms, for example, and we'd like to feed it to some amplifier, so that it can be, so the magnitude of the, uh, your voice is pretty large. So for that, there is one particular element connected, in these with the signal source. Can you tell me the reason of this connection? Or it is connected, this, this capacitor is connected. You understand it's a capacitor. Why is it connected? So far, we have discussed this circuit. So far, we have discussed this circuit. We have discussed this circuit. Now we are connecting some signal source, some, say microphone for example, with some internal resistance, say 10 ohms or 50 ohms for example, you can't take connect it directly, present over there, why this capacitor, CC is present, it's known as a coupling capacitor, used to couple the signal to the actual uh, amplifier. now why it is important? to fit this input signal through the meter. Why? What is the role of a capacitor? What is the role of a capacitor? It will block DC. It will block DC. So if I connect a capacitor over there, if I connect a capacitor over there, what does it mean? Oh, only the small signal. Yeah, yes, but it will definitely block the DC. Right. 
But suppose I have not connected this capacitor, and suppose I have developed some biasing over there. For example, let's let's take some uh, value. Uh, say say for example, let's take let's take VCC is equal to say, let it be 12 volt. Okay, this is equal to 12 volt, and suppose uh, I would like to develop say for example the base emitter. How much? 0.7 volt? Yeah, point. That is required. So 11.3 should drop across this RB. Right? 11.3 volt. Okay. So let's take RB to be say, uh, suppose so this volt is 11.3. So let's take RB is equal to how much? It will be 100 kilo ohms. Right? So what is your IBQ then? 11.3. Volt 100 kilo ohms. What is that? How much micro? How much? One micro ampere. One micro ampere. Point one. Point one. The actual micro. Ten to the power four. Yeah. Ten to the power ten. Hundred kilo ohms. Ten to the power five. So ten to the power minus five. So one point one. One point one micro. 1.1 my 1.13 micro 1.13 micro right with this voltage this base emitter voltage is 0 0.7 volt you are happy yeah, okay 1.13 micro you have some beta say 100 beta beta is equal to 100 so accordingly uh, what will be your uh, say uh, collector current that is uh, 0 0.1 0 0.1 and suppose I am having some RC is equal to say let it be uh, point one. Uh, let it be said, it's a twenty kilo ohms or something like that. Uh, okay, the biasing is not that good. Anyway, but we have got something. Okay. Now, what happens? Connect some uh, some input signal directly without using the capacitor. What happens to the circuit? Will it still be there in the active region? Or when I directly connect the signal over there. So that time, whenever the base current is flowing through this, the total instantaneous base current, this IB plus capital IB plus small IB, total instantaneous current, that is the DC base current plus the small signal current. So there, previously, you don't have this connection. Now this time, you have another resistance, which is typically very small in the range of, say, 10 of in the range of, and this resistance is very large. How much? 100 kilo ohms. Okay. Now suppose this voltage, this resistance is a 50 kilo ohms, 50 ohms, say for example, or 10 ohms, say for example, say 10 ohms, no problem. Here you have 100 kilo ohms. You don't have this capacitor. What will be the voltage developed over there? You have 12 volt, 12 volt divided by, then this voltage, then this voltage will be, if I take voltage, Suppose this voltage say let it be V and this with no capacitor, this V in is how much? Whenever you apply this GCC with no capacitor, and suppose you have some 10 ohms resistance present over there, this is 10 ohms. V in will be 10 ohms by 100 kilo ohms plus 10 ohms times VCC. That is less than at least say 0 0.1 volt. It should be less than 0 0.1. Much smaller. That means your, your junction is not forward biased. With DC, it was forward biased. When the signal source was absent, it was forward biased. But whenever you connect the signal source with a very small resistance, small internal resistance, typically the signal source resistance is very small. Which one? You have a resistance over there, no? You have a resistance. So this resistance is there. Voltage 
something like this what is that voltage typically it is small typically it is small and since the voltage is very very small with respect to say 0.1 volt or so in the range of few millivolts in the range of few millivolts so therefore it will drive the transistor into so what is the way out the way out is that you have to ensure that whenever you connect the small signal whenever you have your signal source uh, your say sinusoidal signal which you want to amplify you have to ensure that the dc biasing should not be hampered you have already done this biasing you have established some non zero dc current that should not be hampered you have to ensure this right so how can you ensure that gc cannot be hampered what is the element available which can prevent any disturbance in dc so they are capacitor that means this time when you connect the capacitor so this capacitor will not interfere with the dc operation of this particular circuit However, it will pass the small signal. And whenever you connect the capacitor, obviously, if you connect the capacitor over there, it will degrade the, the frequency response characteristics, at least the low frequency response characteristics. Right. That we will discuss in our later units of this of this particular course. Subsequent units we will discuss. Because when you uh, introduce some uh, frequency selective elements, frequency sensitive elements like capacitor or inductor in any of the circuits, then it will definitely hamper the, the frequency response characteristics. And since the capacitor is connected in series, so therefore it will hamper the, the corresponding low frequency operation. Because for low frequency, it will also provide some impedance. For high frequency, if the frequency operation of this VS is very large in the range of kilo, uh, kilohertz or so, in that case, this capacitor will act as a simple short circuit. It doesn't have any impact. But for the low frequency, say few tens of hertz or hundreds then this capacitor will provide some impedance and some loss will take place that you don't want. Okay. Yeah, it's a kind of filter. It's a kind of filter, but we have to connect the capacitor. Otherwise, if you don't connect the capacitor, then your circuit will not work as an as an For DC operation only, it will it, it is fine. For DC operation, but as soon as you connect the small signal with no capacitor, it will severely hamper the uh, corresponding to prevent that malpractice. So what you have done, we have to connect some capacitor in series with the signal. Okay? So that's why connected and it is known as a coupling capacitor, which is used to couple the signal to the amplifier itself. Okay. And then uh, we have position in finding out the corresponding so that is a combined circuit right these are the hard ground dc ground these are dc ground this is dcc and what is the equivalent small signal model or what is the equivalent small signal circuit what is the equivalent small signal circuit because now we are, we have already discussed about the uh, corresponding biasing arrangement and now we are in a position in finding out the the gain of this particular amplifier so you have no, not two port, but you have already seen the uh, how can this particular transistor can be represented? Already have seen that this is equivalent to some some pi model. We know it. So this one can be represented by means of its pi model. And while doing so, so pi model and H model and all the other models, they are the small signal models. Remember, the small signal gain. That means if I have some input like this and if I have some output like this, then what is the ratio of these two? That means only the small signal operation. The DC operation done, the biasing. Now we are interested in finding out the small signal operation. And for small signal operation, this should be made inactive. Right? So there you have a VCC present over there in the 
combined circuit, axial circuit. So in the model, this is nothing but what? This is what ground? This is nothing but a ground? And that ground is known as the AC ground. Hopefully, I have discussed this one, no? The notion of DC ground and AC ground? DC ground is hard ground. This value is exactly zero. Refund is voltage. And what, about, what, about, what is the meaning of that? That means the voltage at this particular point doesn't change. The voltage here is always constant at 12 volt. If I, if, I, if I just neglect the supply voltage fluctuation. Suppose there is no fluctuation in the supply voltage. There is no fluctuation. It's a constant, pure DC. 12 volt. So 12 volt is equivalent to 0 time varying signal. 12 volt DC plus 0 time varying signal. So whenever I consider the time variation, so here this particular terminal is considered to be a, a node for which there is no time varying signal present. So that's why it is equivalent to your AC ground. Any doubt? So these two are DC grounds. These two are DC grounds. AC ground. DC ground eventually is nothing but your AC ground. So you can call it like the statement is something like that. All the DC grounds are AC ground, but not the all the AC grounds are DC. Okay. So now we are in the position in finding out the, the small signal gain. So first of all, you have to draw the small signal model of the transistor. What is that? Between base to emitter, you have R pi. Between collector to emitter, you have GMP pi. And between collector to emitter, you have R naught. And the voltage across this R pi is nothing but your V pi. Okay, what else? You see, your emitter is grounded. Emitter is connected to AC ground, DC ground. That means it is also AC ground. This is AC ground. This is AC ground, this one. Right? What else? RB. RB is connected between the base and AC ground. Take a look. RB is connected between base and power supply, power supply to AC ground. So RB is connected between this is the base terminal, base and AC ground. Right? RC is connected between the collector and AC ground. Collector and AC ground. Emitter is AC ground. Right? What about the input? Input is connected to the ground. And in this particular unit, we will not consider any effect of the capacitors. Whenever we encounter some capacitor, we will assume that the capacitor is acting as a short circuit for the given frequency. In the next unit, whenever we do the frequency response calculations, the frequency analysis, then obviously we will encounter the different effects of different capacitors. We have so many capacitors. These are the external capacitors. Apart from that, we have so many internal capacitors as well. Now, we will observe the effects of those capacitors in the subsequent units. Okay. So, therefore, if there is no capacitor, this Vs, this Vs is connected between the base and the AC ground. Right? And now, uh, and this is your, this collector terminal voltage, nothing but the output voltage. Now, I'm finding out the ratio of this V out to V s. Is that uh, a small signal model of the amplifier here to you? Small signal model. From this, from this circuit, how we have derived this one? From this one, this is the actual circuit of the amplifier. So, from this circuit, how have you derived this one? Is it clear? Pi model is there for to represent the transistor, and then the associated elements like the only the R B and R C. Okay. 
then uh, you have to find out the ratio between V out and V s. That is, that will give you the expression for the voltage gain. Okay, so what do you find here? So V s, your V pi, these two voltages are same because we have not considered any source resistance for the uh, input signal source. So there is no drop. So V s and V pi they are same. What is your V out? This current is GM V pi. Okay. This current is flowing. So if this current is GM V pi, so if I apply KCL at this particular node, what is that current? Minus GM V pi. Right? So and this is flowing through this R naught RC parallel combination. What is the equivalent resistance connected to ground? R naught parallel RC. So what is the voltage developed? V out is equal to minus GM V pi times R naught parallel RC. Clear? Then what is the voltage gain? AV is equal to V out upon V s and already you have noticed that V s and V pi they are same. So V out upon V s is nothing but minus G m R naught parallel R c and since R naught is typically very large with respect so therefore this can be presented as close to minus G m times R c. That's the very important expression that we have arrived over there. We have arrived at voltage gain A V is equal to minus G M times R C. R naught is very large. R naught is very large in the range of hundreds of kilo ohms. So that's why you can simply neglect this R naught because it is connected. So if some high resistance is connected in parallel, you can neglect. And if some very small resistance is connected in series, you can neglect that resistance. So the gain is minus G M times R C. Okay. Now say say for example you consider so today with GM how much GM I have started with today? What was the GM? You have started today with a GM value equal to say uh, 20 milli Siemens, yes 20. And let's assume that uh, your RC value is uh, suppose suppose RC is equal to say 5 kilo ohms. Okay, R C is equal to 5 kilo, G M is equal to 20 minimum. Then what about the gain? 100. Mm. 20 to milli unity, 20 to 500. 100. So okay, 100 gain is fine. But what's the problem associated with this particular amplifier? Can I identify any problem associated with this particular amplifier? As far as the voltage gain is concerned, it cannot be always zero. Huh? It can be a constant. So the AC would ground up. And if no. the AC, so the like we can the ground to the VS, it of the AC ground and AC ground is the voltage power. AC ground, that, that is this ground is a hard DC ground. This is DC ground. Oh, sorry. This is DC ground. DC ground means AC ground. All the DC grounds. Are AC grounds, but not all the AC grounds are DC grounds. Okay, but what is the problem associated with this particular? Forget the mind, it's a phase reversal. It's a phase reversal. So the idea is that your if if your input is something like a sinusoidal signal, output should have I mean, output should not be any distortion in the output. There should not be any distortion in the output. Right. Forget the phase reversal. But what is the Main difficulty associated with this particular amplifier form. Take some heat from your BJT bias. Take some heat from BJT bias. X bias circuit we have discussed. What was the problem associated with the fixed bias circuit? Q point was not stable. Q point was not stable. Yes. Similarly, the gain that you have obtained over there, this gain is not also stable. Why not? Why not? Why not, Why not stable? Because it's a function of GM. This voltage gain is a function of GM. AV is equal to minus GM times RC. And what is GM? 
जीएम इसको आईसी के अपन बीटी राइट मेक इफ यू ऑपरेट दिस पर्टिकुलर एम्पलीफायर एट एट ए फिक्स्ड टेंपरेचर देन इट इज कांस्टेंट गेन इज कांस्टेंट बट इफ यू ऑपरेट द दिस पार्ट इफ यू इफ यू डिजाइन दिस पर्टिकुलर एम्पलीफायर एट टू डिफरेंट टेंपरेचर्स से ट्रिगर एंड से 50 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड देन यू विल सी दैट देयर इज अ चेंज इन द वोल्टेज इवन इफ द सर्किट कंपोनेंट्स आर सेम इट्स स्टेबल गेन we always look for a stable gain stability in terms of biasing stability in terms of gain as well but stability is not achieved because it's a function of gm and whenever you encounter gm that means you understand it's a function of temperature it's not constant right so therefore what we can do we can go for hopefully you can remember this circuit Yeah. Some emitter resistance was connected in series with the emitter terminal, and we have that time we have discussed the circuit is much more stable with respect to the previous circuit in terms of the DC uh, analysis, right? Right? Now, for this model, one second everything is remaining the same. Only the only change you have to connect one resistance RD between the emitter and the ground. One second, this to a DC ground. And this one is your AC ground, right? So only one change will take place. Rather, two changes will take place. One is this RB and RC. Previously, they were connected directly to the emitter because emitter is the AC ground. But this time, connected to AC ground. So therefore, these are connected to AC and from emitter to AC ground, there is another resistance that is RD. that is the change because of this connection okay once again our job is the same the finding out the ratio between vs so what is vs then if i apply kvl so this vs is nothing but v pi this voltage plus this voltage vs is equal to v pi plus vre what is that vre That means the current which is flowing through RD multiplied with RD. What is that current? Basically, the emitter current. That is emitter current, right? Now I can call it okay. It's close to collector current. That is very large. Alpha is close to unity. Then it is nothing but your GM V pi times RD. Apart from that, we have another IB times RD. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, another IB will also flow through this. But if I just neglect that part, that component, because beta is very large. So it is basically GM V pi times R D. So V S is equal to V pi plus R D. That can be approximated to V pi plus GM V pi times R D. Okay. So one plus GM R D times V pi. What is V out? V out to GM V pi is equal to R D. Basically, basically you have so at this particular point, this current is minus GM V pi. But now. One compo one current will flow through this R not, and other current will flow through R. At this time, I cannot call it like R not R C. They are in parallel. They are not in parallel. They are not in parallel. But since R not is typically very large with respect to R C, so therefore you can consider okay, almost the entire G M V pi will flow through this R C. Then it is one second another approximation minus G M V pi times R C. Okay, and then you take the ratio V out upon V S. V S is equal to one plus G M R C times V pi, and V out is equal to minus. Times R C, and if you take the ratio, then this V out upon V S is coming out to be G M R C minus G M R C by one R D. So you have G M in the numerator as well as you have G M in the denominator. So even if there is a change in the temperature or some other change in the environment, then obviously this gain is much more stable. And if I consider that that uh, if this G M R D product is much much larger as compared to the numerator, then one thing it is is equal to minus R C upon R D, and that's a much more stable gain. Previously, we have minus G M R C, and this time we have minus R C upon R D. It's a ratio of two resistors. R C upon R D. So it's not a function of beta. It's not a function of the uh, any any of the transistor parameters. It's not a function of the temperature. We assume that okay, the resistance value doesn't change with the temperature. So this circuit is much more stable. DC wise, you have already seen DC wise it was stable, right? DC is it was stable. The DC analysis, if you uh, perform that uh, this uh, calculation, that temperature is much more stable. Similarly, 
as far as the voltage gain is concerned, it is one single spinning a stable voltage gain. But the magnitude of the voltage gain is reduced. High gain means low stability. Low gain means high stability. Previously, previous circuit gives you very high gain with minus GMRC. Minus GM is typically large. I mean, the GM is typically large with respect to one upon it. <laughs> right. So, therefore, last time the gain was uh, large but not stable one. This time, if I relatively lower gain but more stable. There is a compromise, there is a trade off between the gain and the stability everywhere. In every circuit, in every electronic circuit, in, in the control system, everywhere you will see that there is, there is a tussle between the, the gain and the stability. So, the first circuit was a high gain circuit with lower stability. This circuit will provide you a more stable amplifier, but with low gain. Okay. And in the next few classes, we will learn some other uh, the biasing arrangements and they are the calculation of those uh, different uh, uh, voltages. Okay. So we'll stop here today.